Yeah, it looks like people enjoyed the last video about taking 100 watt panels output and taking it into the house with no wires. So, on the right here, we've got a bunch of parts to improve it. And let's see what we can do about fixing some of the issues. First thing, let's get the coils made. About 20 feet or six meters of old telephone wire. First of all, I'll cut it into two match lengths. I'm not sure how many turns that'll be, but they will both be equal then as matched coils. Look away now if you've had a vasectomy. What I've done is to make the first turn and stick it onto this cardboard. And then every turn or so, add a bit of super glue and just keep winding around and around, keeping it flat against the last turn. And that's how I'm making each coil. Such that, when finished, that's a coil of 19 turns. And now I'll do exactly the same on this piece of cardboard. And there we go, two matched coils. The next thing I've done is to neaten up the cardboard and then to remove some of it, simply by tearing it away from itself to leave a flat backing. That means we've got the least amount of material in the way if we have to turn the coils round for better conductivity. Now, before making a circuit for those coils, let's sort out this wiring from the 100 watt solar panel. This is one from Renergy, and the output wiring, it isn't the best, it uses mains cords, but it does produce about 75 to 80 watts at the EcoFlow power station indoors. So, I've left it as it is, because it does work. Now, what I was going to do was to replace the wiring to the coils with this mains cord here, because if you recall in the first video, I was using clip leads. So the idea was to use that, plus a couple of these automotive type clips, and that should sort it out. But, I found this, which is another end for the XT60s. So, what I'm going to do is simply connect that on, and use the other end of it to connect up to the circuit to the coils. That's the way I'll go. Of course, something extra about that is, if I can get monetized and I can get 500 subscribers, well, I could afford proper wiring. You know, that's one, one dream goal, as it were, to replace this sort of thing with, well, the right stuff. There we go, connected on, ready for action. I've just realized something while building the circuit. I've done this wrong. These connections should be on the other side, such that this one will be against the window, so this will be, the left side will be against the window. And this one will be receiving, pressed against it, with those in the way. So what I really should do is, poke these wires, the two through there, and the, these two, on the other side. I'll do that. Okay, fixed. It's not the prettiest because of the super glue, but now it'll be able to sit flatter against the window. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Yeah, what I was explaining was that I've put this one now behind there, such that when the driving coil goes in front, there'll be the same direction, the same orientation, and that normally works the best. So that's why I was saying it was the wrong way round. But it's fixed now, so let's carry on. Here's the circuit I'll be using. And the only change is going to be, instead of a S9014, I'll be using the 3055. There'll be a diode from the emitter to base, and some kind of resistor to the base. Here's the data sheet for the 3055. It's an NPN, and its pins are base, collector, emitter. Not quite as powerful as the other one, but it's okay for voltage, about 60 volts, get about 6 amps through, 75 watts total dissipation. We should be okay. I've got a test circuit made now, and I'm using a 300 ohm resistor just to test. I'm going to try it with a 1.5 volt AAA at first. On the receiving side, I've got back-to-back -back LEDs, one going one direction, one going the other, so they can see which way around the power flows best. So what I've done is turn the transmitting circuit upside down, as though it's outside the window, and I've got this one this way around, so it's as though it's inside the window. 
Let's connect the battery. I'll just hold on to it. Ah, yes, yes, there we go. It's quite nice and bright actually. Right, I've brought the coils outside now for the first proper test. And there's the 100 watt panel over there. Now if we talk about specs, there's a BAC, and you may, may remember from the last video how large it was in the window. And this smaller coil, of course, will make less of a footprint, it'll look better against a window. But the wire's only about 2 amps capable. So the thinking was, if the 6 amps comes out of one of those, then we could have 3 of these systems against windows around the house, or, you know, on the same side of the house, whichever, as collection points for rooms. That could be a decent idea. As I say, they're only two amps capable. So the next part, with baited breath and all the rest, is to hook this up to that panel. And I hope we don't get smoke. Let's have a see. Connects up the positive. And it flashed. And that was it. Even that bird saw that. Oh no. But all we're getting is a flash. Interesting. From both LEDs. I wonder what's causing that. Could you uh, tell me in the comments below what you think's happening? Each time I press it, I'm getting a flash on and a flash off, but it's not carrying on lighting up those LEDs. Hmm. And the other thing is, this is already hot. That got hot very quickly. A horrible thought is that I instantly killed the transistor. That would do the same thing. I'll try it with the one and a half volt battery. Right, so I've just been in for the battery and um, let's see. No, we're running. Oh, I am surprised. I really honestly thought I'd blown up the transistor. Ha, ah, so. What on earth can it be? Well, we do know one thing, and that is that the BAC, the big ass coil there, worked when it had a water resistor. I got two pieces of copper instead of a base resistor and put them in water. So I'm going to try the same thing with this. I've now got a couple of pieces of wire, bits of copper, into a small bowl of water. What I'm going to do is replace the resistor with that and see if the system works. So, does it work? We're looking for these lights to stay on. Let's connect it to the positive. Oh, no it doesn't. It flickered a bit more than it did before. In fact, we're getting two flickers now, is it? Each time I, each time I connect. It does something, but it still doesn't stay on. But, another thought was sea salt. There's an electrolyte in there. We may as well give it a shot. Right, I've, I've dumped some in now and let's see if we get anything. Any change anyway, might change the behaviour. Oh, look! <laughs> the lights came on. And then faded to a flicker. But it's showing something. I bet the transistor got hot. If I leave this a uh, few seconds while I'm wittering on here and then connect, I wonder if it comes on again. Let's have a look. Yep, there we go. Check the temperature. Yeah, it's a bit hot. So as a summary for this video, we've improved the size. We've also had the idea of access points, as it were, a couple of amps from whichever window you want from a solar panel. Still got the problem of excess heat to the transistor and still got the problem of needing to have well an electrolyte based water <laughs> copper thing for a resistor so those issues do need to be solved and they would be the questions I'd like to ask you about does anyone have ideas how to solve those issues and then we can do a third video I'll definitely incorporate people's ideas